everyone, welcome back. We are going to, going to continue to learn about these earthquakes today. Boom. I think these are super interesting. A little bit scary, but definitely a cool thing to learn about. So let's dig right in. Our learning intentions for today. We are learning to identify and use visuals in the text so we can deepen our understanding of that text. So we know we're successful when we can identify the visuals, which another word for those is text features, explain the author's purpose for including the visual, and then explain how the visual helps the reader gain a better understanding of the text. Let's talk foundational skills. We're going to continue working with multiple meaning words. Now remember that multiple meaning words have more than one meaning, hence multiple, right? So we can use context clues to determine the meaning of a word. Or if you're really not sure, you can also use a dictionary if a context clue isn't working out. So a sentence that I have is an example. After Congress approved the bill, the president signed it into law. Now, if you're not sure, the multiple meaning word that we're talking about right now is the word bill. Because this word has several different um, meanings here. So one, you could think of bill as someone's name, right? But also we have bill in this case in Congress, that's a law. And the way I know that is that it says it signed it into law. But another thing that you can have is a bill, like something that you have to pay. So like Miss Wagers, I got a water bill here that I would have to pay, okay? That's something else that you might hear of is your parents talking about having to pay bills. Okay, these are things that you have to pay. So bill can have several different meanings, but in this case, we're talking about a law. So going back with these multiple meaning words, here's a couple more example sentences. Were you able to spot all six of the differences in the pictures? I was only able to find five of them. Do you know what word is the multiple meaning word in this sentence? Did you say spot? If you did, you're correct. So were you able to spot all six differences? I was only able to find five of them. So I can use context to know that spot, when the next sentence is I was only able to find, spot and find mean about the same thing. Were you able to spot them? Were you able to find them? That's about the same. We're not talking about spot like a spot on a dog, okay? Or like I have my picture of a jaguar that I drew. It has lots of spots, right? So we're not talking about those kinds of spots. We're still talking about like spot, are you able to find something? The next one, I felt a cold draft in the room as I started editing the second draft of my report. Ooh, a cold draft. Ooh, brr. Ever felt those cold drafts? Like when you're sitting underneath an AC vent or something? Right? A cold draft means like when you're feeling like cold air coming down on you. Whereas if I'm editing the second draft of my report, hey, we're thinking about something that we are writing. So when we're editing our draft, that's an incomplete copy of our writing. And when we went hiking last fall, I tripped several times, but I didn't fall. So again, you can see that this time, the same word again shows up twice. So we had the word fall. So first it says, when we went hiking last fall, because there we're talking about a time of the year. We're talking about the season, fall or autumn, you might call it. I tripped several times, but I didn't fall. Like I didn't fall to the ground. That's definitely good. We don't want to scrape our knees here, guys, right? So again, I need you to understand that sometimes words can have different meanings and we have to be able to understand what's happening in the sentence to be able to figure out the meanings of those words. So your foundational skills today is more of the same from yesterday where I'm going to give you some definitions and you need to match the word to the definitions. Let's do a little bit of poetry. We don't talk about poetry a lot, but I do have um, some poetry that goes along with our topic of earthquakes. So it says, Instructions for the Earth's Dishwasher by Lisa Westberg Peters. Please set the continental plates gently on the continental shelves. No jostling or scraping. Please stack the basins right side up. No tilting or turning upside down. Please scrape the mud out of the mud pots, but watch out, they're still hot. As for the forks in the river, just let them soak. Remember, if anything breaks, it's your fault. Did you notice anything about this poem? Did it rhyme? 
No, poems don't have to rhyme. That's the great thing about poems. And this thing, was it really talking about a dishwasher? No, it wasn't talking about a dishwasher either. It's actually talking about an earthquake and the earth. Please set the continental plates gently on the continental shelves. That's part of the earth. Please stack the basins right side up. No tilting or turning upside down. Okay, and so it goes on and it says, remember if anything breaks, it's your fault. Ooh, I remember learning yesterday that the word fault, that means a crack in the earth's crust. Hmm. So they're just a little bit of poetry fun. It has a little bit to do with earthquakes. And back to our vocabulary, we have the word churns, which that's to move by or as a, forcefully, uh, a forceful stirring action. Okay, so I always think about churning. In our picture, that water in that kind of circular area, it would be churning around, going around and around. So it says, California, the answer lies deep within the earth. Our planet's solid rocky crust floats on the mantle, a 1,800 mile thick layer of very hot and dense rock that slowly churns around like a huge pot of boiling soup in very slow motion. So in the text, we're going to see it there. It says, it churns around. So we know we can imagine it kind of like slowly like stirring or going around a pot. All right. So here we go. Let's get back to our reading. Remember, this is an informational text. So it's going to give us lots of information about earthquakes. That is true. Four out of the five world of the world's earthquakes take place along the rim of the Pacific Ocean, a zone called the Pacific Ring of Fire, Alaska, Washington, Oregon, California, Mexico, and the west coast of Central and South America, and the east coast of New Zealand, the Philippines, Japan, and Russia, um, Kamchatka, and the Kuriles, are all located along the Pacific Ring of Fire. Another major earthquake zone stretches through Italy, Greece, Turkey, and Armenia to the Middle East and into Asia. In the United States, almost half of the earthquakes each year occur in Southern California. In other sections of the United States, earthquakes are rare. Hmm. Right? Have you ever felt, felt an earthquake here? The same. I haven't felt an earthquake where I live here in Kansas, but that doesn't mean that they don't happen in Kansas all the time. And we'll have to see, learn more about that later. But our question, what is the main idea about earthquake zones in the first paragraph? Well, let's go back and look. Four out of the five of the world's earthquakes take place along the rim of the Pacific Ocean, Ocean, a zone called the Pacific Ring of Fire. A good hint for you guys is a lot of times when we're thinking about main idea, you'll find it in the first sentence. So right there, what's the main idea about these earthquake zones? Well, it says four out of five happen in the Pacific Ring of Fire. So I could say most earthquakes happen in the Pacific Ring of Fire. And then what details support this? Well, again, it says four out of five of the world's earthquakes happen there. And it also says that in the United States, almost half of the earthquakes each year occur in Southern California, which is part of the ring of fire. So let's see, we have a picture here or a map, we could say, um, of the United States. And so, like I said, here where I live and we live in Kansas, um, we're in the green here. So it says minor. There's earthquake zones in the continental U.S. We just have minor damage here where we live in northeast Kansas. But again, if you live in California, you might have experienced major damage from an earthquake or moderate damage. Or again, if we go to the east coast, if we live in like the Carolinas, again, you might have experienced major or moderate damage from an earthquake. But maybe if you're living in Texas, that maybe you're not really seeing any damage from earthquakes. So it depends on where we live, how many earthquakes we see. But notice that through the central um, United States, it's mostly green with this little bit of yellow. So not too many earthquakes in central United States. All right, and then we also have another map so it says, on which plate is most of the United States located? So we're gonna start with our stop and think questions. So the map shows the plates of the Earth's crust. The red dots indicate places where earthquakes have occurred. So all the red dots are where earthquakes are. But first, 
let's think about, okay, where is the United States? Hmm. Get that mental picture of what does the United States look like? And find it. This is the United States. You can kind of see Florida right there. Okay. This is the United States. What plate is it located on? It's located on the North American plate, which makes sense because the United States is part of North America. And then how does the map help you understand where most of the world's earthquakes happen? So how does this map help us understand that? Well, I can see the dots, right? I can follow all these dots. And what do you notice about the dots? They're all going all along this edge. A lot up here by Alaska. What do you notice about the dots? Well, they happen to follow the edge of the plates, right? Do you notice how they're following these lines? These black lines and they're... The earthquakes are following the plates or the edges of the plates. It says, why do most earthquakes in the United States occur in California? The answer lies deep within Earth. Our planet's solid rocky crust floats on the mantle, a 1,800 mile thick layer of very hot and dense rock that slowly churns around like a huge pot of boiling soup in very slow motion. The slowly moving mantle carries along the solid crust, which is cracked like an eggshell into a number of huge pieces called plates. The plates float slowly along about on the mantle up, up to four inches a year. As the, man, as the plates move, they run into or pull away from each other, producing enormous strains in the rocks along their edges. The United States and Canada are riding on the North American plate, which is slowly moving against the Pacific plate. The colliding plates cause most of the earthquakes along the West Coast, but earthquakes can occur anywhere there are stresses in the underlying rocks. So again, you can see in the map, most of our earthquakes are happening here on the West Coast, which here's the North American plate, and here is the Pacific plate. And so those two are rubbing together, which causes our earthquakes. Let's talk visuals today. Remember, that is our learning intention, is to look at these visuals in the text. So authors often use visuals to present information that's better understood through pictures than through text. Maps are one type of visuals. And remember, a text feature is another word for a visual. So we've noticed that today in our text, we had two visuals or maps for the author to help explain earthquakes a little bit more to us. So why do you think they included this map? Hmm. All right, well, it's probably to show us more about the type of damage or where earthquakes occur in the United States since that's where we're living, right? So it gives us, so that way you can kind of tell from where you live, what kind of earthquakes happen in your area and then how earthquakes occur and the damage that occurs from them across the United States. So we can do a little bit of comparing. And then why do you think the author included this map? So instead of just having the United States, now we actually have the whole world. Right. Now you can see where earthquakes are happening around the world. And also since they included the plates with all of the fault lines, you can see the patterns of how, where earthquakes are occurring. So we can see that they're following um, the lines at the edges of the plates or the faults in the crust. So also from visuals, we can learn some different facts. Even though that there's not really any words with this map, it just says has the title, Earthquake Zones in the Continental United States. And then the key has the damage levels of none, minor, moderate, and major. We can still take some facts from this. For example, we could say that earthquakes cause no damage in parts of Texas and Florida. Because I can see right here, damage none. Here's Texas and Florida. They both have that yellow color. So I can see that they really don't cause any damage there. That's a fact that I've learned from the map. Another thing I could say is that earthquakes cause minor damage in the middle part of the United States. So again, if I'm looking in the middle, most of it is green, like we discussed before, and I know that that means minor damage. So again, that's another fact that I can learn from the map is that earthquakes mostly cause minor damage in the middle part of the United States. So I'm right here in the middle. And then lastly, earthquakes cause major or moderate damage in the western part of the United States. 
Now remember the western part, we'll go back right here, that's on the left of our map. Major or moderate, well most of it is purple or blue. They just have this little swath of green here. So most of this is purple or blue. So I can see that most of that damage is ma major or moderate. And then we can also at, you know, ask those questions like I just had pop up. Are there areas in the United States where the, an earthquake has never occurred? What other questions could you come up with based on that map? I hope you came up with a good question because there are lots of questions based on this map that we could be asking besides are there places that an earthquake hasn't occurred? Maybe what's the worst earthquake that's occurred in the United States? Do you think of that one? Because that map doesn't answer that for us. So let's again go back and review our learning intentions. So we said we are learning to identify and use visuals in the text so we can deepen our understanding of the text. We know we're successful when we can identify and identify visuals or text features. So we did that because those were the maps, right? Check. Explain the author's purpose for including the visual. So we discussed that. Why do you think the author included that map? All right, so we talked about why they would do that. Check. And explain how the visual helps the reader gain a better understanding of the text. And remember we talked about the facts that you can learn from a visual, like the map, or the questions that you could generate based on a map or another visual in the text. Check mark. So we've covered all of our success criteria for today. So now you're ready for your reading response. And I'm really gonna push you guys today. You have a two part reading response. So first off, I want you to answer this question. What does this map show? If you paid careful attention to the video, you'll already know the answer because we discussed it. So it would be a good idea to pause and rewind and go back to where we discussed this map because then you'll have the answer right there. Be sure to answer this question though in complete sentences. And then your second question, what do you learn about where most earthquakes occur? And then what text evidence support this fact? So what you can do, go ahead and answer the first question in the, that complete sentence. What do you learn about where most earthquakes occur? Answer that in a complete sentence. Then you can highlight or underline in the text, your text evidence to support that. All right, that is all for today. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you're loving learning about earthquakes. I think this is such an interesting topic. And again, be kind to one another. Be sure to do all of your work and I will see y'all later. Bye.